Hi, it's Chad Rudolph, Electronic Repair here. Uh, welcome to the channel. First, if you haven't been here before, uh, feel free to uh, like and subscribe on the video if you like it. Comment if you have any questions or comments. And let's see what we got in the shop today, guys. Hey, guys. Uh, working on something different today. Uh, this is a, a Diamond Kinetics bat sensor. A uh, customer has, um, I guess these are the new ones. Uh, he has some older units, older sensors, and they work fine. Uh, I guess normally, a uh, customer sent me a YouTube video, which was awesome, explaining exactly what's wrong and what, how it's supposed to work. Uh, what you normally do is, once you have your um, wireless charging base plugged in, I'm assuming standard micro USB connector there, you take the uh, sensor and you put it on top of the charging pad and it connects to the charging pad I guess or it detects it. This light in the front I think turns blue and the unit starts charging. It'll be obviously charging. Uh, it's not doing that. It's not detecting the base at all. And And you can actually hear something rattling inside this sensor. I don't hear it inside this one, but I'm going to take the customer's word for it. You can see it turns on by itself once it detects uh, motion. Um, this one here, this says old battery. Not sure what that means. I gotta check back to see what the customer said. And that's on as well. See that? So let's plug in the base and see what happens here. Okay, right now we're drawing about, I don't know, 50 milliamps, something like that. And the light is red. I don't know if you could see that. I'm going to try to take this first one. Nothing. See it's still flashing there. Try this one. Again, nothing. Try the last one. And there. That's how it's supposed to work. You see that? Blue light. The light in the sensor itself turns red and starts pulsing. It's the way it's supposed to work when it's charging properly. <clears throat> I think this battery is totally dead, that's why it's not. Okay, so definitely not working with these two sensors that are marked loose pieces. So let's unplug the base here. We don't need this right now. Let's figure out how the heck these things come apart. Looks like it's completely sealed, molded. See that? Yeah, it's all sealed. I think. Ah, look at that bottom side. Looks like that's where it comes apart right there. Looks like the customer tried peeling this back. Let's try to put some heat on and see what happens. Maybe there's some adhesive in there. Probably want to be gentle with the heat. I'm sure there's some lithium coin cell batteries in there. Some kind of battery. Batteries usually don't like heat, so we want to be careful.
All right, guys, I think we found the problem. Check this out. We see one side of the coil. Get my. There we go. One side of the coil is going down there, I'm assuming to the board. You see that? The other side of the coil is right here, which is broken. There's the other part of that wire. You see that? 100%, I guarantee that's the problem. And I bet the rattling noise was the coil itself. Let's uh, let's reconnect that. Let's reconnect it and see if that does the trick. Maybe that's not the problem, or maybe there's multiple problems here. I don't know. I'm just gonna get a closer look at this guy. Let's see. Yeah, see that broken wire right there. So, okay. We're gonna tin both sides of that enamel wire and see where we're at be careful with this because we don't want to short the coil itself throw a little flux in there Try that out. All right, that looks good. Let's try this. Hopefully it works. Might not. That coil, uh, it's impossible for this to work without the coil. That coil... Um, is how it receives power. It's basically like a, a little radio antenna, pretty much. I mean, okay, let's see. Look at that, guys. <laughs> yes. Awesome. Sweet. Nice. All right, and what we do here is I normally send the customer a quick text with a video, uh, showing them um, the final testing or the unit working, etc. So let's do that real quick. Here we go, first one down. Working good. There we go. <laughs> I think he's going to be happy. Sending it to him in real time. Uh, I'm going to, I probably won't even edit this video. I'm, I'm just going to upload the video and, and get it out real quick because I told told the customer I would make a video of, uh, of me repairing this, uh, these sensors because I thought it was pretty cool anyway. So if anybody has these sensors, uh, you can either send them over, we'll fix them, or it just kind of gives you an idea. And this doesn't go just for these sensors. I mean, this is any inductive charging system. 
I mean, it, it, it's there's a few components. The main component, obviously, is that is that coil. Uh, then there's some other um, components in there to um, regulate the voltage and, and and charge a battery and things like that, a charging circuit. Um, but if that coil is disconnected, game over, guys. Your inductive charger or inductive device is 100% not going to charge. So I would like to seal this thing back up now that we know it's working properly. And I think what I'm going to do, oh, if I can reach over here, is just use a scalpel, take all that old uh, epoxy off or whatever the manufacturer use looks like some kind of epoxy clean all that up and I guess while I'm cleaning that up I might as well give this guy a charge <laughs> sweet So we work on pretty much, well, not pretty much, we work on any electronics. So if you have a problem with a fish finder, which we get a lot in, or a bat sensor, send it in. Looks pretty good. I'm going to be extremely gentle in here. We don't want to nick any coil wires or anything like that. Be back where we started. And we also have to remember this is used on the end of a bat, so how we reseal this is going to be pretty important. Right? You want to make sure that it'll resist shock, the shock of hitting a ball. I see. So this thing just pops right in place afterward. Yeah. Okay, so what we can do. We could fill this thing with, I mean, epoxy. We could fill this thing with hot glue. We could fill this thing with um, silicon. I'm leaning towards silicon uh, because that'll give it some water um, resistance. In addition to uh, sealing, sealing this in place, giving some vibration protection. And also, if we absolutely had to take this thing apart again, we would be able to. Now, if we pot this thing with epoxy, uh, it, it would be an absolute nightmare to get this thing apart. And 100%, we would damage that coil. Um, I'm positive. Positive. So I think we're going to use... Um, I think we're going to use silicon adhesive. So let's go ahead and do that. Um, give me a quick sec. Let me go grab the silicon.
think what I'm also going to do is just put a drop of super glue right at those connections where we just repaired just to make sure uh, we don't see any issues in the future. In fact, you know what I'm going to do? I'm sure you guys have seen this trick all over the internet. Uh, baking soda and super glue. It's going to make a hard little bond. Seal it up so nothing happens to it. just want to be easy and be careful because um, we don't want to make a mess here. So we don't want to make a mess and look at this. Made a huge mess, but that's all right. So what's nice about doing that, if, if you guys haven't heard of that little trick before, really neat. I mean, you can build up little pieces of, of plastic that way. And take a look at that. See that? Bonded. Looks like it was from the factory, actually. But you can actually build up, not to take a detour on the repair, but check this out. It's pretty cool. You can build up pieces. Like, watch. Where am I here? There. So put a drop down. Put a little bit of baking soda on there. Take another drop. Okay. Now let's check this out. All you got to do is wait a few seconds for it to dry. It dries pretty fast when you put the um, baking soda on it. Then you just blow the excess. And you're left with a solid piece of material. Let's see if you can see that. You see that? Rock hard. Rock hard piece of material. It's very similar to like a plastic in the texture and the hardness. Anyway, little tip guys. Check it out if you need to repair little parts. I've seen people repair like glasses and stuff doing that little trick. Okay, let's make sure every step of the way here, I'm going to make sure this thing still charges because once we seal it up, I don't want to take it back apart again. There we go. Beautiful. See that heartbeat? It's charging. Okay. Oh, let's take our silicone. Just gonna do quite a bit, quite a bit of silicon. I'm gonna um, just flood it with silicon, squeeze it out. There's gonna be silicon coming out the sides. That's fine. We'll clean it up after. No big deal. I just want to make sure it's saturated with with silicon. Okay. 
think that should do it. Let's pop the back on. Again, this is all going to flood out, but that's definitely okay. Let's figure out where the holes are. There. There we go, guys. One fixed. Let's test it again. We're waiting for that slow heartbeat. I think that's when it's charging. So I think it's negotiating right now. There she is. Sweet. You see that? Excellent. Uh, before I send this back to the customer, I'm actually going to charge these quite a long time. I'm going to make sure they're fully charged when they go back to the customer. So this is the second loose piece. So kind of now we know the process, right? We just got to um, heat it up. I guess what I was doing is switching between um, heat and isopropyl alcohol. So using some IPA in there. And just gently working out the sides of the walls, just trying to get that epoxy or whatever adhesive they use freed up. Kind of a tedious process, but works. In fact, the same process works with most things. I mean, even some older fish finders, I believe they epoxy the cases, at least that's what I think, because I have to do the same process. Heat an IPA, heat an IPA. After a while, uh, the glue breaks breaks up, breaks free. And again, I think that um, the loose piece he was hearing, that, that moving, I think that was the coil bouncing around. And because of the coil bouncing around, uh, caused the wire to break. Right, makes sense. Simple. Um, I think if the factory probably did what we're doing now, flooding it with like silicon or you know something like that, uh, it would have prevented this issue. We especially want to focus heat on those four points uh, because that's where the clips are that hold the unit together that we found. We uh, figured that out working on that last unit just now. Oh, where's my spudger?
Hey guys, check this one out. This was the, definitely the rattling hook I was saying. Look at that. Coil is not even connected. Both sides broke. Both sides. So we got to find out where those wire connections are. And hopefully, hopefully reconnect them. Now this thing is, is it? It looks like it's potted in something. Some sort of plastic, I think. I think that's what I'm seeing here. I did find the wires, but geez, I don't know. Super tight, guys. Super tight. Let's see. Let's see if I can get closer to the microscope somehow. Let's try this thing. I tell I don't use this clamp very much. I do not like it at all. I don't know. Hopefully you can see that. Let's see. Let's try. Another business call coming in. Sorry about that, guys. Uh, just quick tip also. Um, if you guys email, uh, it'll be much, much faster. Uh, we respond to emails almost immediately as opposed to phone calls when we're working in the shop during the day. Um, we normally let, well, not normally, but... You know, the phone goes to voicemail quite a bit. Because when we're on the bench, we don't want to get off the bench um, and answer the phones. I know that sounds silly, but we like to focus on the customer's unit we're working on. We don't want to make any mistakes here. We want to give uh, every single customer, no matter if it's a tiny bat sensor or if it's a seven, $8,000 fish finder, we give the customer 100% attention. Um, that's only fair, right? So... Call, by all means call, but email, and we'll get right back to you. Okay. There. Let's see. You see that? Those two tiny little wires there. That is what we are after. Give me a quick sec, somebody's at the shop. Okay, sorry about that. All right, back to work here.
Again, we're going to tin those two little wires. Okay, looks good. Let's turn the coil. The tinning um, burns off the enamel and applies solder to the leads. get a better view of that see that okay now this is gonna be the tricky part I want to kind of put these extremely close together so when I solder them I can sort of solder them in one shot if that makes sense I don't know if I'm going to be able to, but... <laughs> All right, guys. Sweet. Brought it back to life. Awesome. Okay. So let's do that same super glue um, baking soda trick on this guy. To keep those wires nice and secure. Um... One more time. Just every time I move that coil, I want to make sure it's still working properly. Before we glue anything down, that would not be good. To have to scrape off this super glue baking soda. It, I mean, in that case, I would just have to completely disassemble the whole board, take that. And the board seems to be potted with epoxy, which is not fun to try to get out. A lot of scraping heat, etc., etc. Okay. Too much is okay. It's just blow it right off. No big deal, right? Okay, looking good here. Again, we're going to test it. Nice. 
Nice, nice. Excellent. Okay, good. Now, uh, let's pot this thing in with silicon. Okay guys, final test. Here goes nothing. Awesome. Beautiful. So it's got that slow heartbeat charging indicator. I guess that means we're good. Let's try the other one one more time. And then I'd say we're good to go. Beautiful. Let's wait till that red light slows down. Oh, fully charged. Awesome. This guy's fully charged. All right, guys. Um, if you have any electronic devices at all, uh, from, uh, again, high-end fish finders to um, anything, uh, consumer electronics, um, or if you need a project designed, if, if you have an invention you've been thinking about and you need somebody to design a company to build a prototype on a lower budget, shoot us an email. Um, we're interested in all kinds of different projects. It keeps things interesting, right? So any questions, RudolphRepairs at gmail.com, www.RudolphRepairs.com, guys, 1-800-517-9101, but shoot us an email. See you guys in the next one.